Continuing Chapter 2. About an hour later, Mrs. Oakes walked up the driveway from her cottage, carrying a string bag with her working shoes and apron and a little parcel of tidbits for the animals. Her placid, gentle face wore a rather disappointed look because the dogs usually spied her long before she got to the house and would rush to greet her. I expect Mr. Longridge left them shut inside the house if he was leaving early, she consoled herself. But when she pushed open the kitchen door and walked inside, everything seemed very silent and still. She stood at the foot of the stairs and called them. But there was no answering patter of running feet, only the steady tick-tock of the old clock in the hallway. She walked through the silent house and out into the front garden and stood there calling with a puzzled frown. Oh, well, she spoke her thoughts aloud to the empty, sunny garden. Perhaps they've gone up to the school. It's a funny thing, though, she continued, sitting on a kitchen chair a few minutes later and tying her shoelaces, that Puss isn't here. He's usually sitting on the windowsill at this time of the day. Oh, well, he's probably out hunting. I've never known a cat like that for hunting. Doesn't seem natural somehow. She washed and put away the few dishes, then took her cleaning materials into the sitting room. There her eye caught by a sparkle on the floor by the desk, and she found the glass paperweight, and after that the remaining sheet of note of the note on the desk. She read it through to where it said, I will be taking the dogs 